Hey guys, my name is Jay Wilson from Onyx Reporting. Um, in this Doctoring Up Jet Reports webinar, um, we're going to take a quick look at using proper filter technique when it comes to summary reports. Um, the general gist of the story is I got a report from a customer. They said, Jay, this report takes forever to run. And I end up with a lot of zeros in my report. And I want to filter out the rows that have a lot of any that don't have any data in it. And this is a report that they sent me. Um, without you know running the report, you can see right away it's a grouping report. It's going to list out basically actuals grouped by uh, the GL account number in the global dimension two and global dimension one code. Code. Okay. Um, I don't want to take the time to run the report again. I'm not comfortable sitting around waiting for a report to run forever. But let's talk about proper filter technique. You know when I build jet reports, what are the proper filtering technique? Okay, so rule number one is always put filter criteria in the top left. Okay, the, whoever built this report, they put in global dimension one code is ADM, and that's a good start. But I bet a million dollars that each of these functions probably has additional filters. Here I have a filter for GL account number as well as global dimension two code. This is showing actuals. Credit amount is star, right? There probably should be a couple more filter criteria here in the top left corner. So I'm going to go ahead and assume that you wanted to filter for global dimension two code. Um, they didn't give me a value, so I'll just say star. Um, I saw that we were running for a GL account range of 1,000 through 3999. Uh, actuals 1415, so that's a posting date of, I don't know, 6 1 2014 through, uh, doing it backwards, 1 6 2014, I'm in Britain, 35 2015. Okay, that's how you do a date range. Am I missing anything? Yeah, credit amount is star, it is currently hard coded, so credit amount is star. And right now it's star, but maybe they want to run an exception report. I only want to see transactions that were over, I don't know, $10,000, whatever. Um, but these filter criteria need to be in each NL summary function. And that's actually another rule to add to our list. Each NL summary function, so that's NL rows, columns, um, sum, must have the same set of filter criteria. I mean, unless you're on a totally different table, right? That's a different story. But each of these functions is against the GL entry table. So again, each summary function has to have the same set. I'll put the same, must have the same number of filter criteria. Each function has to have five filters. So here, this is my first function. I can see I've only got one filter for global dimension one code. So I need to add global dimension two code. I need to add GL account number. I need to add posting date and credit amount. The really smart thing about using cell references to put in your filter criteria is when you walk away from your function and come back to it later, you can just count boxes. How many boxes do I have? One, two, three, four, five. Awesome. I have five boxes here. How many boxes does this function have? This box only has, or sorry, this function only has two boxes. And insult to injury, look at this. We're filtering on global dimension one code twice. That gets us to our next rule. Never filter on the same field twice. Don't do it. So one of these two uh, global dimension one code filters has to go, and I'll just tell you right now, it's the top left filter that has to go. Because I'm working with a grouping report, I have to get the value of my parent list. Okay? And now I have to put in all my filters over again. So global dimension two code is this, and GL account number 
is this. And posting B is this. And credit amount is this. Okay. If I followed my rules, I should have one, two, three, four, five boxes. And if I followed my rules, I did not filter on global dimension one code twice. Awesome. As I get to GL account number, how many boxes do I have? One, two, three. Oh dear, I'm filtering global dimension one code twice, so I know right away, let's delete this puppy. This guy's got to go. Ugh. I have a hard-coded filter for GL account number, but that's okay. We're going to replace that hard-coded filter with a cell reference the way we're supposed to, and then I just need to add in posting date and credit amount. And let's count our boxes. One, two, three, four, five boxes. Doing great things. All right. As I get to my NL sum function, how many filters do I have? One, two, three. Uh, global dimension one code twice. Take it out. Uh, didn't add posting date yet. And then look at this absolute cell reference here, or absolute. Absolute filter. No good. Let's take it out. Count my boxes. One, two, three, four, five. Perfection. Okay. Let's take a look at this original function here. You know, the user said, Jay, this report takes forever long to run. And let's think about why is this function taking forever long to run? In this function right here, we're saying, make a list in rows of global dimension one codes from the GL entry table, where the global dimension one code starts with ADN. First off, what span of time are we talking about? You know, what span of time are we going to evaluate? Is there a filter for posting date? There is not. Which means that you basically said, I need you to scan the entire GL entry table since the dawn of time. And I really don't want that. Right in here, we're saying, give me a list of all of the unique Global Dimension 2 codes. Again, no filter criteria for time. So we're saying, since the dawn of time. This is why this report was taking forever long to run. Additionally, we're making a list of values, but we're not filtering for a specific date range or a specific set of GL account numbers. So we're saying, I, I, if it ever was posted against, I want to see it. And that's not true. What I really want to see is only stuff that had activity in this set of filters. And that's why I re recommend putting your filters in the top left, because it's really easy to remind yourself, what do I really want? I only want this stuff. So I need to put in some filters. I'm feeling lazy. I'm just going to copy paste. Now here, I probably don't want the same. Look at this. Look at this hard-coded GL account number filter. Okay, well, GL account number should be 4,000 through 999. Okay, that's what sets these two sections apart, is they have a different filter for GL account number. When I have a situation like that where, you know, I have a filter, in this case GL account number, that only affects a specific section of my report, what I like to do is get that guy nice and close to the section that it modifies. I have this gap here. I'm going to close this gap. And then I have to add it. Oh, oh, it already got it. Nice. Yep. Yep. You're tracking? Where are you? Perfect. So again, I can just copy, paste, copy, paste. How do I do? Oops. Okay, down to here. Move you down to here. Copy, paste, F2. Move you down to here. Lovely. All right, this is great. Oops, no filter for posting date. Let's put you in. All right, stick, stick on for the ride. Um, right now we're saying, okay, 
I-114-15 actuals, doesn't it seem reasonable that the very next thing you're going to ask is to compare it to 1314 actuals and then do a variance? All right, we have the same situation like this all over again. If a filter only affects a region of the report, move the filter to that region. Right? We're not going to store posting date in the top left corner anymore. We're going to say, hey, posting date, you technically only affect this column, so that's where I'm going to put you. And similarly, uh, when I define my date range for 2013 through 530-2014, right, this filter criteria only affects column M. So let me copy, paste, check my cell references. Uh, these all shifted. No good. Let's go back. Lock the column. Lock the column, lock the column, all right, copy, paste, copy, paste, posting date, just lock the row, yeah, you'll get good with these cell references once you do this long enough, obviously today is not my day, And there you go. Right, let me slide these guys back over so we can review them. All right, first thing we learned about proper filter technique is you always put your filters in the top left corner. That was rule number one. Rule number two was every NL summary function must have the same number of filter criteria. So in my primary list for my grouping report, I have one, two, three, four, five. Oh, this is questionable. Here I'm saying only show global dimension one codes that posted were posted against in 2014. But what if I use something in 2013 that I haven't used in 14 yet? No good. I'm going to move this filter criteria over here, and we're going to call it report range instead of posting date, just so I can you know kind of mentally figure out what the difference is. The report range runs from 1 6 2013 through 2015. Does that make sense? It's a two-year span. This is a two-year span here and here. This is not for just one year. I need all of the Global Dimension 2 codes that were posted in the last two years. Same for the GL account numbers. For the sum of actuals, only affected by this column, only affected by that column. And let me move this puppy over here. Move that puppy over there. And we're done. All right. Well, there you go. That's proper filter filtering technique with summary reports. I will make this uh, file available on my blog. Um, just email me if you want me to send a copy of it to you. Uh, my name's Jay Wilson. You can always reach me at jae at onyxreporting.com. Thanks so much. Jason, bye.